be more abstract uh, SGML based uh, uh, programming environment or something which would then be very portable to like Xbox and Windows and they were also trying with Vista to have the uh, uh, foundation, uh, what's it called, something foundation uh, which was basically a way of trying to integrate Silverlight type things into the desktop which was a complete disaster, nobody would develop for it, I think Yahoo was one of the very few companies that even tried to do that. So basically they've got all those platforms, they don't have a modular uh, kernel that they can port, you know, and share among phones and, and, and other things. They, they have all these different variants of things, but can you imagine if there was different types of Linux, like Linux for mobile, Linux for supercomputers, instead of just having one mainline kernel and you can actually just use the parameters and actually adjust some options in it. Uh, so Microsoft has got these really weird situations if you if you actually know the, the engineers inside of the company. Uh, they also bought the Sidekick and they bought all kinds of companies that have different operating systems out and based in BSD. So they've got a mixture of things and they try to stick things together. They thought about buying RIM or the Blackberry because of course they cannot buy Apple and Google, you know, too big for them. Uh, and so they don't really have a way of entering the market by acquiring something. So now they try patents and they try bonding it. They try to co-opt Nokia in some ways paying them a quarter of a million dollars, as it turned out later, we, we weren't sure how much they paid because nobody knew, but recently turned out from the SEC filings it was a quarter of a million, sorry, a quarter of a billion, which is almost nothing compared to what happened to Nokia eventually. Um, and, and so, yeah, they, they don't have a way of moving forward, they still lie down trying to accumulate some money from Windows and Office being sold to the OEMs. Well, we can move on a nice little stepping stone of a story here, just a very brief one, um, and still in respect of Windows 8. I saw a very good poster. It's one of those uh, demotivational posters. I've never heard these before, but they were uh, like comical posters. That's uh, a bit ironic and uh, maybe joking. But one was quite topical, which I'm hoping that you'll be able to shed some light on, because I know that uh, you're very... Uh, very the well one. Yeah, I've seen that. Yes, you've seen it, yeah. You knew where it was. For the ones that haven't seen it, uh, listen to this show, it was um, a picture of AOL in, uh, from, I believe... Uh, a good few years ago, and um, it was showing AOL's uh, front end uh, because AOL, if, if people don't know, the service um, uses its own clients. Coasters, yeah. Coasters company. And it, it was comparing it to Windows 8 and how the two looked the same, and it made a comment at the bottom: "Those that uh, forget history are uh, prone to repeat it." Something along those lines. But you looked at the pictures of AOL, you looked at uh, Windows 8, and they were very, very similar. Which is ironic because we have some news recently that um, Microsoft has bought uh, a substantial amount of uh, patents from AOL. And, and that's okay. And I hope Roy is going to fill us in with this since you're the more uh, learned person on this. Uh, patents. I uh, wrote about it. Uh, I did some research on it. What actually bothered me a lot was that the press was quoting the Microsoft lobbyist Florian Moore far too much. Uh, considering the fact that he's admitted Microsoft pays him for it. The propaganda, you know, he shouldn't be po he shouldn't be quoted as an independent blogger in articles about Microsoft. So I had this complaint to make about it, and I think it was partly kind of breaking the story or breaking with analysis. But I think Microsoft PR is giving him briefings about what to say and what to do uh, because they pay him a lot of money to do all kinds of stuff. Uh, now about the about the I, I call AOL the coasters company because they used to send you all those CDs you don't actually need. Uh, you know, just trying to throw loads of CDs at the problem and hope they get enough customers this way. Uh, but the, you know, you know, Microsoft Bob, the operating system where they tried to do a kind of an interactive, simplified GUI, uh, that was a disaster as well. So you don't even have to approach and to pull out examples from AOL to just realize that if they change the GUI too much and try to revolutionize or to um, confuse people, they lose the whole advantage of using Windows, you know, the, the APIs for developers, for users, it's, you know, knowing exactly what they have to click to get something, to get to something. And as soon as they change that, then you might as well use just something like Unity. Well, yes. It's, um, I'm fascinated by who the uh, who Windows 8 is going to appeal to because there was a recent article again Microsoft putting up its deadline of um, XP and uh, its annual sort of try to get people off uh, get away from finally get them off XP onto Windows 7 um, but it doesn't make me wonder who's actually Windows 8 is going to appeal to is it going to appeal to Enterprise well I wouldn't have thought so they're the ones that are mostly on XP is it going to appeal to uh, the mainstream consumer well, since they seem to be mostly going for tablets and desktop machines in respect of upgrading, for me, unless they're a hardcore gamer, I don't see the average consumer wanting a desktop 
traditional CPU keyboard monitor anymore because their requirements on uh, computing can be easily met with tablets, their Facebook, their email, etc., etc. It's only when you get into the realms of the gamer who maybe requires the uh, the upgrade of their specs permanently to keep up to date with the games and the sort of physical desktop machine. Nobody else requires them. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm, it will be quite interesting. Suffice to say, we'll see it stuffed on every single PC that's uh, for sale in the shops. So by hook or by crook, it will sell. But for somebody that specifically choose Windows 8, I just cannot see what the catch is. Though, I mean, even the even the GUI itself, it's I've seen similar front ends which that run it, run over the top of an existing Windows uh, deployment, which is just like a it's a front end made in a, in, a, in another language. And it works the same way. And I'm thinking, well, why do people want to, to get Windows 8? What is the what is the appeal? What can it do that they can't already do on any version of Windows uh, that they currently have? Um, and how on earth will the, the the GUI itself, with its tiles and all its little fancy Fandango bits, how will that work on a desktop when you have a traditional user with a keyboard and mouse? It just doesn't sit very well. I mean, certainly in the tablet market, they'll find themselves, I think, in the same position that Windows uh, Phone 7 has. They've arrived to the party too late with a product that's behind already existing uh, competition. And exactly the same as what we've seen in the Windows Phone 7 will happen with the tablets. But time will tell. Um, we'll see if I have egg on my face when uh, when the tablets, when it finally does hit a, is a tablet that people can get their hands on. But um, I do think that Microsoft have the bigger problem of their image and perception as well. Because I think uh, speaking to a few people, I, I wrote about this on one of my articles recently, I spoke to a manager of a very well known uh, retail store who said that people won't buy uh, Microsoft products, in his opinion, because they want to get away from the Microsoft brand. They don't want to use Microsoft products anymore. Maybe they've been burnt by them before. Maybe they've seen the competition. Maybe they like just something different because they've used Microsoft for many, many years. Whatever the reason, there's a big uh, perception and image problem with Microsoft. Mm, especially um, among developers as well. Many of them actually develop things on the web to be used as services you have to subscribe to now or for online stores. And if you look at statistics and what people used to develop now, so you see things like Objective C and Java and things like that. Because people who used to develop for, you know, shrink wrap applications, they now go for a different modality or a different approach to delivering services to the users. And so they use things like PHP on the web, they use things like Python on the web, they use things like Java or Dalvik to, you know, develop for Android. And, uh, and increasingly more of these developers attract more of those users and there is more appeal to the tab with the tablets because they get they get very very good applications for the tablets that you couldn't get on the desktop or maybe you could kind of emulate it or make it compatible with desktops but they aren't available at the same cost uh, and you kind of actually take them around with you on the tablet so uh, all this you know with, with quad core uh, ARM CPUs that you can you know you can carry around very nice applications with you um, and so Microsoft is trying to go off this market and Microsoft is not alone if you look at KDE now as this uh, tablet called Vivaldi a few people from KDE actually trying to market the tablet and they have been working for quite a while making Plasma desktop also kind of netbook friendly and compatible and making it easy to work with your fingers on it and kind of extend things and expand things and clicking things with your buttons uh, and GNOME is now working also on a, on a very finger-friendly uh, UI. And uh, then you have Unity, which is very much geared towards the same type of thing. And reportedly today, uh, Ubuntu is trying to uh, uh, to work on some kind of a uh, phone platform of some sort, because Canonical is hiring people uh, with a job description that seems to suggest that they do that. Uh, that they do try to make some kind of a Ubuntu phone, and not just not, not just something for the Android store, which I think they called something like uh, Ubuntu for Android or whatever. Uh, so everyone seems to be trying to go towards this space of like you know uh, application stores and phones and tablets and everything as an appliance, which is very bad for multi-purpose computing in general. Well, I'm hoping. Uh, I mean, I don't know how um, strong that news is in regards to the Ubuntu phone. Uh, for want of a better word, because uh, I've only read a few articles in it. Is it, um, is it still just a, a concept stage and a, a rumour uh, combined, or is it, is it something more substantial there? The question I'd ask as well is, is it going to be, if if and when Canonical do have this um, Ubuntu operating system for phone, is it going to be offered uh, for any OEM, OEM to pick, or is it going to be, uh, are they going to partner with other hardware um, providers and uh, produce Ubuntu phones? 
I hope the former will be the choice because I think that was a big mistake of things like Kin and these social networking phones that were suggested in the past. The lack of choice in your hardware is one of the big decisions 